Hey, I'm in the market for a new gig. My day job is in sales, but it's not my dream job. So I'm looking for something in the medical field. Do you think you could help me? Hmm. Would you know how to respond to this? Well, let's talk about it. New gig, day job, medical field. Hmm. Today, we are going to practice speaking together about your job. You are going to learn some important vocabulary, questions, and a sample conversation, plus a chance to practice speaking with me about your job today. I hope that this lesson will boost your skills because talking about your job is an extremely common daily conversation topic. So with today's lesson, you'll be on your way to success. To help you remember everything that you learn in this lesson, I've created a free PDF worksheet that you can download and use all of the vocabulary, expressions, questions, conversations, and you can answer Vanessa's challenge question at the end of the worksheet. You can click on the link in the description to download it. All right, let's get started with some common vocabulary about jobs. The first category have to do with employment. We'll talk about unemployment later. You might say, my day job is in an office, but I'm taking some night classes to become a nurse. Hmm. This expression, my day job, usually means your primary job, the way that you make the most money. It could imply that it's during the day, but if you happen to work a night shift, you can still say my day job. This is my main job and how I make money. It's my day job. Another way to talk about your main job is to say, my nine to five is in a marketing firm. My nine to five. This talks about the hours that you work, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. You might work different hours. You might work 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. You might work in the afternoon or the evening, but we still use my nine to five to talk about your primary job, my nine to five. There is kind of a new movement talking about this expression, and it's often about how people don't like their nine to five, that this is something that they're not satisfied with, and people who are not enjoying their nine to five might find some articles online that say, want to ditch your nine to five? Here's how to find your dream job, an expression we'll talk about in a moment. <laughs> but sometimes in this modern age, nine to five implies that it's just a job. I don't really care about it. It's my nine to five. It's somehow that you, it's the way that you make money, but it's not really your passion. It's my nine to five. What about jobs that are not your primary money making job? You can use a lot of different expressions. We could call those jobs a gig, a side gig, a hustle, a side hustle, or you might just say, I do it on the side. So let's imagine that you make earrings, but it's not your nine to five. It's not your primary job. Well, you might say, I do it on the side. I make earrings on the side. Or you could say, I have a side gig making earrings. Okay, this is not your primary job, but it's something that you do and you still make some money, but it's not your primary job. If you don't work 40 hours a week at a job, then you have a part-time job. In the US, 40 hours per week is considered a full-time job, but a lot of jobs are part-time jobs. So you might say, yep, I work a part-time job on the weekends at a restaurant. I work a part-time job. Maybe it's your main way of making money. Okay, you just work less hours, or maybe it's just a side thing, <laughs> or maybe you're also a student and you have a part-time job at the same time. That's a great way to describe something that you work less than 40 hours a week on. Now let's talk about unemployment. Unfortunately, over the last few years, a lot of people became unemployed. This is really scary. You don't know how you're going to survive, feed your family, take care of your future. You might be laid off. Laid off means you didn't personally do something wrong, but the company either cut your position, they couldn't pay for you anymore, and it's not something personal, it's usually a problem within the company. So when a company is suffering, usually financially, or they change their whole system, their whole model, and they don't need some people anymore, 
they might lay you off. This is a great phrasal verb. Of course, you don't want it to happen to you, but it's a great phrasal verb to know to explain the situation because it's not that you were fired. To be fired means you did something wrong. <laughs> and they said, sorry, you can't work here anymore. And there was a problem. Maybe you were late to work too many times. You got fired. This is different than being laid off. When you're laid off, it's not your fault. And it's not embarrassing to say, oh, man, I was laid off during the pandemic. That's not embarrassing. That's fine. It's not your fault. <laughs> but if you say I was fired, usually there's a little bit of embarrassment to talk about that because it means there was a problem. We can also say I lost my job. This is a little more indirect than being fired. It might be because you did something wrong. I was late to work so many times that I lost my job. This means you were fired, but you didn't directly say that. But it could also mean that you were just laid off. During the pandemic, I lost my job. That's not your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. There were just problems with the economy, problems with the world in general. So you lost your job. So this expression to lose my job can be used either way. It can be used if you get fired or if you get laid off. Now let's talk about how you feel about your job. Let's imagine that you are a waiter at a restaurant. Well, you might say, I'm a waiter, but it's just a job. I'm looking for something else. It's just a job. This is a common expression to talk about a job that you don't really love. It's not your dream job. This is the opposite. If you love your work, for me, I love being your teacher. <laughs> I love being able to be your teacher online too. It's a really a great combination. Great for you. I can touch a lot of people and also my life can have a lot of flexibility. Working online as your English teacher is my dream job, but there can also be some problems with work. You might say it's hard to find a good work life balance. This expression, a work life balance is often used when you're working so much, or maybe like me, you work from home. So it's hard to have a good line between your personal life and your work life. So maybe if you've been uh, working a lot, you might say, I just need to take a break and find a better work life balance. That's really important. If you've been working a lot, maybe you've even been studying a lot, you might face burnout, burnout. This doesn't have to do with fire, but it kind of has the sense that your figurative flame and love of your job has gone out. So if you experience burnout, it means the thing that was your dream job, the thing that you felt passionate about, you no longer feel passionate about. This might be temporary. This happens to a lot of people like me <laughs> who create content on YouTube. You have to be creative and come up with a lot of ideas. And sometimes there aren't many good ideas. Maybe uh, I just have some kind of uh, temporary writer's block <laughs> and don't come up with a good idea and I feel overwhelmed. Well, that might mean I am burnt out. I am experiencing burnout or we might say, I'm burnt out. I'm burnt out of my job. I've been working for 12 hours a day for the last three weeks. I'm burnt out. I need a break. I hope that you can avoid this before it gets <laughs> too serious, but it's something that's really common if you are working too much or if you're studying too much. Now let's talk about four common phrases for describing your job. And just a little note, a while ago I made this video, a hundred jobs in English. So if you would like to learn how to pronounce your personal job, or if you would like some more information about specific jobs in English, you can check out that video and get some more details about that. But let's talk about four common phrases to talk about what you do. You might say, I am a teacher. I am a doctor. I'm a healthcare worker, I'm a construction worker, I'm a designer, whatever you might be, I am. But we could also say, I work in plus a field. I work in education, I work in healthcare, I work in business, I work in marketing. So here we have a general term, it doesn't talk about your specific position, but it's a common expression used when you're describing your job. I work in education. Maybe you're not specifically a teacher. Maybe you help to create a curriculum or maybe there's something that's a little complex that you don't want to explain. <laughs> you might just say, I work in education. Cool. You could also talk about the company you work for. 
I work for Amazon. I work for Google, especially if this is a well-known company, even if it's just well-known locally, this is a common expression you might use. Yeah, I work for Samsung. I work for Duke Power, which is the power plant in my city. If I said this to somebody who lived in France, they would have no idea what I was talking about because this is a local business. But if I said that to someone locally, they would understand exactly. So it's kind of all about the context here. What if you have your own business? What if you run your own business? You can use that expression to run. For me, I run my own business. We could say, I run an online education business. Well, that means that I teach online, but it means I'm the CEO, the boss. <laughs> I wear all the hats. I run a business. So we could use this for a lot of different situations as long as you're the entrepreneur, you're the one who's in charge of the business. I run a business. Before we get to our sample conversation, of course we need to talk about some common job questions. This is essential for daily conversation because usually these are the questions we use in small talk. So that's why this topic is really important to know about. One of the most common small talk questions after you say, hey, my name's Vanessa, oh, nice to meet you. What do people say next? What do you do? What do you do? The full expression for this is possibly, what do you do for work? But we often just say, what do you do? And this doesn't mean, uh, I'm sitting here right now talking to you. What are you doing right now? <laughs> this means, what's your job? What do you do? So you might use one of those expressions we talked about earlier and say, oh, I work for Google. I work in marketing. Awesome. What do you do? Or what do you do for work? When you tell someone what you do, if they are a good conversationalist, they might ask more questions. Or you could ask this question too. What's that like? What's that like? So you're asking about their experience. What's it like? to be a nurse in the hospital these days. Well, you might say, well, I like the doctor I work for, but it's just been really intense lately and it's not my dream job. I really want to be a photographer for foster animals and help them to find a new home. That's what I would love to do. I'd love to get into photography. Okay, well here you just answered the question, what's that like with a lot of juicy details that can further the conversation more. So when you ask someone, what's that like? If they give you some details, don't miss that opportunity. You can pull any of those details and say, oh, you like foster animals? Have you ever had any foster animals? Oh, I have a dog too. And you can kind of snowball the conversation. So this is a great way to get more information and learn about someone else. If you're talking with someone who you already know, maybe you kind of think you know what work they do, but you're not sure or you haven't talked with them for a while, you might ask this question. Where are you working these days? Where are you working these days? These days means now. <laughs> but if you haven't seen someone for five years, maybe you knew what their previous job was and you're trying to make small talk conversation again and get to know maybe something's changed in their life. So you could ask, where are you working these days? And you might say, oh yeah, actually I'm still working at Google. I've had the same job for the last five years. I feel really lucky that I didn't get laid off. So that's where I'm at. And let's say you're talking with someone and you know what job they have. Well, you could ask this question. How's work going? This is similar to asking, how's your family? Oh, how was your vacation? This is just a common small talk question about someone's job. How's work going? And maybe they'll just say, oh, it's going fine. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> but if they give you more information, they might say something like, oh, it's going okay, you know, it was kind of my side gig for a while and then I got hired full time, but I'm having a hard time finding a work-life balance, so I think I'm gonna look for something in a different field soon. Oh, well, you just had a great conversation there and you've got lots more information to be able to have more conversation with someone just from the simple question, how's work going? All right, now it's time to see a sample conversation using all of these expressions or many of these expressions that we just talked about. You'll see my husband Dan and I having a little chit chat about our jobs and I hope that you recognize some of these expressions and questions that we talked about because in a moment after the sample conversation, it will be your turn to use them and to have a conversation with me. Are you ready? Let's watch. Hey Vanessa, where are you working these days? 
Oh, hey, Dan. I run an online business, so I can work from anywhere. It's pretty great. Wow. What's that like? Well, I help students learn English and speak with confidence. It's my dream job, but I have to be careful to avoid burning out. Oh, that's awesome, but I understand. What about you? Well, unfortunately, I just got laid off at the coffee shop when they closed, but I got a job working part time at a hotel. Oh, man, that's a bummer. Hmm. Have you ever worked in marketing? I'm looking for someone to help if you want a side gig behind the scenes. That'd be great. Tell me more about it. Hmm, I wonder if Dan will get the job in marketing working for Vanessa. <laughs> All right, now it is your turn. And what I want to tell you is I will be asking you some questions and having a little conversation, but I recommend going back and reviewing this. You're welcome to pause the video and answer longer if you would like. This is a great chance to have kind of a, a structured, no pressure conversation in English. All right, are you ready to get started? Let's imagine we were at a gathering and the host said, oh, Vanessa, this is your name. And we get introduced to each other and then the host leaves. Here, we need to have some small talk. So I ask you, so tell me, what do you do? And now it's your turn to talk, go ahead. And what's that like? Do you enjoy your work? Oh, me? Oh, I run an online English business where I teach English online to students around the world. It's really my dream job. I feel pretty lucky. Well, good luck with your work. I'm so glad to meet you and I'll talk to you later. Bye. How did you do? Did you have a chance to speak out loud and practice with me? Feel free to go back and review that last segment or this whole video as many times as you would like to boost your confidence because when you have small talk in English, you will absolutely encounter this conversation topic. Don't forget to download the free PDF worksheet for today's lesson with all of the important vocabulary, questions, sample conversation, and Vanessa's challenge question at the end of the worksheet. And now I have a question for you. What is your dream job? Let me know in the comments. I would love to see what it is. Maybe it's your current job. Maybe it's a job you would love to have in the future. Let me know what's your dream job. And I will see you again next Friday for a new lesson here on my YouTube channel. Bye. The next step is to download the free PDF worksheet for this lesson. With this free PDF, you will master today's lesson and never forget what you have learned. You can be a confident English speaker. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for a free English lesson every Friday. Bye.